I'm not worried about you seeing me, I'm worried about you hearing me. Um, we have, there's no question in my mind that we'll get a quorum, which is great. Uh, we do have a fair amount of people that are checking in. I want to give them an opportunity to do that. And so my guess is it will start probably five or ten minutes or so. Um, I, I do want to, um, if I could have everyone's attention just for a moment, do something that's a little bit uncharacteristic for me um, and kind of use the stage as a soapbox, but it's something that I feel pretty strongly about. Um, I don't know if we have anyone from the Pembroke Mariner and Express here, any reporter, do we? No, nobody's here? So maybe they couldn't find their way to Pembroke. But um, we have excellent coverage with our local radio station, WATD, and Pembroke Town News and PAC Television. Um, and I was a little chagrined to read last week's Pembroke Mariner and Express. And I've been reading these newspapers since I could read. It goes back to the Silver Lake News days. Um, and there was not one story about this town meeting nor the town election. And there's been precious little coverage in the local newspaper uh, for a while now. And I was hoping there would be a reporter here that I could ask the reporter to tell his or her publisher and editor. I certainly will. Um, but I do think if Gateway Newspapers wants to put Pembroke on its masthead, that we deserve the respect to have the town covered the way it should be. So I just ask that you convey that to whatever means you think is possible. Thank you. Um, I just want to say one other thing um, before we actually start the meeting, uh, and that is, as you know, there's 15 zoning articles uh, on the war, and I think that's a world record for us. Um, some are less controversial, some are more, co more controversial. Um, as the moderator, I've always been pretty liberal about amendments to, to anything. Um, we have to make sure they're within what we call the four corners of the article, for any article, whatever it is about. We can't go beyond the intent of the original Warren article. Zoning articles are particularly troublesome in the sense that you can change one word, for example, from uh, a shall to a, a may to a shall, and change the whole uh, context of the zoning article and articles. And zoning articles are really important because they can affect people's property values and what they can do with their property or what their neighbor's property is going to look like. So I ask that if you are intending to make a motion, an amendment, which you're perfectly within your rights to do, of any zoning article, actually any article, but particularly zoning articles, we have a form that will soon be on the front desk here that I ask you to fill out. And we're not trying to preclude amendments, it's just that we need to get it right. These amendments and the all, artic all zoning articles have to be approved by the Attorney General. And if we stray far afield from the original intent of the Warren article, they'll knock it out, and we, then it's all for nothing. So if it's a, a little more complicated, then we may have to give town council a few minutes to review the amendment to make sure it comports with the bylaw, the intention of the bylaw, and state law, and constitution, and all that stuff. Uh, again, it's not an attempt to suppress amendments, but we only have to can al allow amendments that are proper. And in order to do that, we need to make sure they're in writing. And also, the town clerk needs it for the record as well. So if, you do, uh, if it's a very minor amendment, um, that's fine. But if it's anything more than just something that's very minor, we're going to ask you to fill out this form uh, beforehand, if you can, and present it to us so we can review it. And that's really for any amendment uh, on any article. But again, zoning articles are particularly uh, tricky. Thank you.
a nod from our town clerk and we 20 people left to check in. All right, let's give them just a, another minute or two and then we'll start. Call the meeting to order. I know there's a few people left to check in, but we'd like to get started. Um, the uh, chair has been satisfied that the warrant has been properly posted, so the meeting will dispense with the reading of the warrant, as we always do. I'd ask you to rise um, and join in with the Pledge of Allegiance. The chair is very pleased at this meeting um, to introduce someone who is just become four months, three months ago, yeah. three months ago, uh, a U.S. citizen. And uh, the clerk tells me that there are about five Pembroke residents uh, who just became U.S. citizens. Uh, that's a big deal. And so... <laughs> so we happen to have one of them who happens to be a neighbor of the chair uh, with us tonight to uh, lead, us, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The chair introduces Mary Driver. <laughs> this is refreshing. Um, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which, which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Great. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. There's, I think it's on. We have a, just a couple of quick items to go through before we actually start the meeting. Uh, and we'd like to, Chair, we'd like to introduce uh, our state representative, uh, Representative Josh Cutler, uh, to make a presentation.
Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, delighted to be here. Great to see such a great turnout this evening. And uh, in particular, I'm here, along with uh, the sentiments of my good colleague, Senator DiMacito, to help recognize two individuals who have uh, contributed mightily to the fabric of, of Pembroke Town Government and want to take a moment briefly to recognize them. Uh, if I could have uh, Selectman Matt Furlong come up here and join us for a moment. See how Matt does. He's much younger. This should be much more spry. Uh, he's, see, see this, he's a smart fellow. But while, so while he's making his mount up here, I want to recognize Matt for all the great service he's put in on the Board of Selectmen. Uh, it's tremendous to see a young person such as Matt show such an interest in local government, uh, being a great example to young people all over Pembroke and throughout the South Shore. You've done great work on the Board of Selectmen. I know this is not the last we've heard of you here in Pembroke. I know you're going to be back. And I wish you great success in your continued endeavors. And hope you'll come over here and, and uh, help me read this citation from the House of Representatives. All right. <clears throat> Commonwealth of Massachusetts House of Representatives, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Matthew J. Furlong in recognition of your three years of outstanding service to the Pembroke Board of Selectmen, serving as chairman during the 2018-2019 year. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses a hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this day of May 2019, the State House of Boston, Massachusetts, signed by Robert A. DeLeo, Speaker of the House, State Senator Vinnie DiMacito, and Representative Josh Cutler. Matthew, thank you. Congratulations. I want to say thank you to Josh and for all of you uh, for clapping on that. You know, I had no idea this was going to happen tonight, so I'm very gracious. And uh, thank you all for the great three years. We also would like to recognize a distinguished uh, gentleman who all of you know, who served quite a long time on the Pembroke School Committee, Mr. Patrick Chilcott. If you could come on down. So Patrick's going to attempt what I did. Oh, he did it much nicer than I did. Well, except for the last part. <laughs> I was going to box that, but today wasn't working. <laughs> so some of you may be shocked to know that Patrick and I did not always see eye to eye. <laughs> Just, OK, not all of you knew that. But so I hope my words will carry even more weight with what I'm about to say, which is that I don't know anyone who was more dedicated to education in the town of Pembroke, Pembroke than Patrick Chilcott. And so with those simple words, I'm going to read this citation. <coughs> the Commonwealth of Massachusetts House of Representatives, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Patrick M. Chilcott in recognition of 12 years of outstanding service to the Pembroke School Committee, serving four years as chairman, most recently during 2018-2019. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses a hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this day of May 2019, the State House, Boston, Massachusetts, signed by State Senator Vinny DiMacito, House Speaker Robert A. DeLeo, and Representative Josh Cutler. Patrick, thank you. Um, I, I do want to thank Josh and, uh, and really this entire town. Um, you know, Josh, I, I, as you said, we didn't always see eye to eye, and having you actually give me something is quite an honor. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, I love this town, and I love this school system. You know, we're sitting here in a school auditorium tonight for town meeting because the school is the community. And this community, time and time again, has come to the rescue and the support of this district, of these kids, and of this building. And for that, I will always be grateful. I will be eternally grateful for you giving me the pleasure and the privilege to serve for the last 12 years. So it's me that thanks you tonight, and I just ask you to continue to support the district and these kids. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, Chair, we'd now like to introduce uh, member of the Board of Selectmen, Bill Bolter. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, glad to see you all here tonight. I uh, just got a quick message for you that uh, Pembroke's first uh, fisheries festival is going to be this Sunday at the uh, Lucky Dog Restaurant on Route 14 in Pembroke. And uh, at that festival, the Division of Marine Fisheries, along with the Pembroke Fisheries, is going to cook 75 fish for the residents of Pembroke. First time in, uh, I can't remember how many years ago. Um, the Fisheries Commission has worked very hard throughout the last six years, and uh, we've brought the fish up to a total today of 428,515 as of today. And uh, would you like to... If you'd like to stop by, uh, we're going to have a, a display of equipment. We have a couple of Wampanoag Indians that are going to come. They're going to bring some of the Wampanoag food, jewelry, and there's going to be some other activities. We're going to have free pontoon boat rides on Furnace Pond, which is also one of the spawning areas for the fish. And uh, the whole event is free. And if you'd like to donate something when you're there, we would appreciate that. But other than that, um, all the things that we're going to be doing there that day is going to be free for Pembroke. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Uh, just a couple of quick things before we start. Um, I just want to make sure everyone has a copy of the warrant. We, that is your Bible for this uh, town meeting. If you don't, please raise your hand. We have plenty of copies available. Uh, and the tellers who have been sworn in, they know they're appointed uh, areas. Um, I, I had to ask, I wasn't sure whether this is North Pembroke or South Pembroke or what the dividing line is here, and all it means is we're a little tilted, well we were, we're a little more even out now. Um, it's like a church when the bride is more than the, than the groom. Uh, but it's just to help the, the um, tellers uh, know where the vote counts are. So the tellers have been sworn in. So if you don't have a copy of the warrant, please raise your hand and uh, the tellers will make sure that you have one. Um, we may have a lot of people here tonight. If you are new, this is your first meeting. We welcome you. We hope you come back. It's democracy in its purest form. Uh, we have two microphones on either side. You have to address the meeting through the microphones, through the moderator. Um, and if they're, they are wireless mics, so if you are having a problem getting to the mics, just I'm sure someone will help you. We'll make sure that the uh, microphones get to you. But other than that, uh, I ask you to address the meeting uh, with, uh, in front of the microphones and to, even if you think we all know who you are, for purposes of the clerk and the reporters uh, here, I ask you just to state your name and your street. Um, the only exception to speaking from the microphones is if you want to make a point of order, and a point of order can be, Mr. Moderator, I can't hear, I don't know what we're voting on, I don't understand, uh, or some other procedural motion, just shout it out and I'll recognize you. That does not include a point of order, a, point, a motion to move the question. You have to make that from the microphone. But absent that, I ask you to address the, uh, the, the meeting from the microphone. Uh, we do have a visitor section over there. If you're sitting in that section over there, you will not be counted. Members of the media are there. I've been informed that we do have a reporter uh, from uh, the Pembroke Mariner and Express here, Audrey, whose name I'm sorry I'm forgetting already, but I do welcome you here and I'm glad you're here uh, covering the meeting. Um, so if only if you're sitting there will you not be counted. Um, as always, uh, Carol Dodge is out front benefiting the Key Club. She's been doing it for decades now, uh, selling just what we need to get through a long evening coffee and sugar uh, that benefits the Key Club. And um, the chair has one other uh, announcement uh, it likes to make. Um, and as you know, um, the firm of Copeland and Page has been the town's law firm, town council, for many, many years, probably close to 30 years. Um, for a good chunk of that time, perhaps most of it, uh, our town council has been Joel, Joel Bard. Uh, this will be Joel's last meeting in Pembroke as he goes into semi-retirement and fulfill a bucket list that is uh, fairly extensive. Um, I want to thank him for his service to the town, not only providing wonderful legal advice at these meetings and to the town, but also as a personal friend 
And as you know, the town council acts as the parliamentarian for these meetings. And over the years, as recently as this morning when we exchanged emails, uh, he's been a tremendous uh, help to the chair. So I just want to uh, thank, uh, on behalf of this meeting, thank Joel for his service to the town and wish him well <laughs> in retirement. Uh, if you have any questions about procedural motions, that's certainly a, 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 an appropriate point of order, but there is a little primer in the front of your warrant that explains some of the basic motions if you're not familiar with them. Um, one thing I ask, the chair asks at every meeting, and, and particularly for this meeting, uh, there are many articles, including all of the zoning articles, that require a two-thirds vote. Um, some borrowing articles, some uh, bylaw changes uh, require a two-thirds vote. To save us time, uh, the chair asks at the start of every meeting for you to give the chair permission to call the vote to, so we don't have to have a standing counting vote at every one of these. And I can assure you, and you'll hear it in the motion, that if it's close at all, we'll have a standing vote. So Mr. Boyle moves that if a two-thirds vote is required by statute, the moderator is authorized to declare a two-thirds vote if, after a show of hands, the moderator determines that the two-thirds majority has been reached. Provided, however, that if a vote so declared is immediately questioned by seven or more voters, the moderator shall verify the two-thirds majority by ordering a standing count of the yeas and nays. Is there a second? second. Chair, his second. Any debate? All those in favor, please say aye. Oppose no. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, if you have any amendments to any article, but particularly the zoning article, uh, can we have, okay, we've got a stack of forms that will be available here that I ask you to fill out because we have to make sure that we get, particularly zoning articles, um, we get the exact language so we can make sure that the amendments are proper. And we do have a consent calendar, and we pull the first uh, ball for the consent calendar. We'll, there's about four articles that are uh, in everyone's consideration is non, are non-controversial, and to save us some time, we'll take them as a group. So um, we will take our bylaws author, oh, uh, one other thing. We do have a special town meeting. It's posted for 7.30. We'll do a couple articles first, and then we'll, uh, we'll recess the annual town meeting and go to the special town meeting. You, the warrant is included in the warrant that for the annual town meeting, there's only four articles on the special town meeting warrant. So uh, the first item of business, as always, by town bylaw, is the wage and classification plan in the town budget, which is Article 2. And it refers to Appendix D, which is in your warrant. And for purposes of making the motion, the chair recognizes Stephen Curley, chairman of advisory. Mr. Moderator. I move that the town amend schedules A, B, C, and D of the classification and compensation bylaws according to the schedules listed and printed in Appendix D of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting Warrant and to raise and appropriate from taxation the sum of $39,201 to fund the changes and further authorize the town accountant to allocate the funds to the appropriate budget items voted under Article 3 of this meeting. So motion's been made and seconded. Uh, we'll go through each schedule individually. I won't read each uh, line item, but I just will take them in total. If there is any questions, any hold, please shout out. Chair recognizes Town Accountant Michael Buckley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'd like to ask Mr. Curley to um, add to his motion. If you notice between SC18 and SC20, there is so no SC19. Uh, so we need to add summer head counselor and after school head counselor, SC19, with a maximum step of $13.92. Which schedule are we on now? We're on um, page I'll 34. Schedule C. Okay. Why don't we wait till we get to that? Sure. Okay. Um, so first we'll take schedule A. Are there any questions, any debate on schedule A? All those in favor of Schedule A as printed in the warrant, please say aye. aye. Oppose no. The ayes have it. Schedule B, appointed part-time offices and employees. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Schedule P, B as printed in the warrant, please say aye. aye. Oppose no. The, uh, oppose no. 
Please say no. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Schedule C, full part, full time, part time employees. This is the one we want to amend. Yes, Mr. Chair. recognizes Mike Buckley. SC 19, summer head counselor and after school head counselor with um, only a maximum step of $13.92. Is there a second? second. Chair has second. First, we'll, we'll take up the entire schedule as amended. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Schedule C as amended, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Schedule D, elected full-time, part-time officials. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Schedule D as printed in the warrant, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 3 is the next item of business. And Article 3 uh, refers to Appendix A, which is in the back of your warrant. Page 28. Page 28. 28. Thank you. Or, sorry, 20. And the chair recognizes Steve Curley from Advisor. 26. I think 26. Okay. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town appropriate the sum of 63 million. $723,515 to fund the operating expenses of the town for the fiscal year 2020 as listed under Appendix A of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting Warrant, column headed 2020 Town Manager. And to fund this appropriation, raise and appropriate from taxation the sum of $62,356,887 and transfer the following sums. Silver Lake Escrow Fund, $98,016. Ambulance Fund, $831,866. Septic Betterment Program, $93,360. Cemetery Funds, $27,332. Recreation Revolving, $11,400. Council on Aging Transportation Fund, $80,000. School Construction Surplus, 73660 School Athletic Funds, 97712 Recreation Revolving, 49282 And Wetlands Protection Fund, 4000 Motion's been made and seconded. We'll go through each department individually. Um, Tom Bylaw says that we Shall, should take our votes with a show of hands, but so we don't end up at the chiropractor tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to ask for a voice vote. I'll mention the department. If someone wants to amend, debate, or change a line item, please just yell out hold, and we'll come back to it. So we'll start with the first item. Um, again, this is under Appendix A. Moderator wages and salaries, $100. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Board of Selectmen. Wages and salaries elected, 9,000. Wages and salaries, 161,946. General expenses, 10,000. Purchase of services, 124,465. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All po opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Uh, town administrator, wages and salaries, 144,591. General expenses, 2,800. Uh, all those hearing no, seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Legal purchase of services, $115,000. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Advisory committee, wages and salaries, 6973 General expenses, 545 Reserve fund, $50,000. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Town accountant, wages and salaries, 137,282. General expenses, 51,800. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Board of Assessors, wages, wages and salaries elected, 5,400. Wages and salaries, 258,834. General expenses, 37,500. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. 
Treasurer Collector, Wages and Salaries, 359,874. General Expenses, 79,185. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Oppose no. The ayes have it. Data Processing, General Expenses, 58,075. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Oppose no. The ayes have it. Town Clerk, Wages and Salaries, Elected, 86,353. Wages and salaries, 51,443. General expenses, 12,320. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Elections, wages and salaries, 15,000. General expenses, 13,000. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Registrations, wages and salaries, 7,600. General expenses, 8,700. All those in favor, please say aye. Oppose no. The ayes have it. Conservation Commission, general expenses $910. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Oppose no. The ayes have it. Planning Board, wages and salaries $50,320. General expenses $1,840. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Oppose no. The ayes have it. Zoning Board of Appeals, wages and salaries, uh, sorry, just general, under general expenses $2,300. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Town building maintenance, wages and salaries, 192,787. General expenses, 91,342. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Police department, wages and salaries, 3,645,343. General expenses, 263,607. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Fire department, wages and salaries, 3,326,837. General expenses, 143,000. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Department of Inspectional Services, wages and salaries, 412,895. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Building Department, general expenses 12,400. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Emergency Management, wages and salaries 2,753. General expenses 9,511. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Dog Officer, wages and salaries 52,520. General expenses 5,550. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Pembroke Public Schools, 34,108,229. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Department of Public Works, wages and salaries, 944,872. General expenses, 250,788. Snow and ice, $150,000. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Townwide utilities, general expenses 194,077. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Board of Health, wage uh, general expenses 23,950. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Council on Aging, Wages and Salaries, 181,450. General Expenses, 44,733. Senior Tax Program, $5,000. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Veteran Services, Wages and Salaries, 73,644. General Expenses, 1,900. Benefits and Medical, 100,000. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Commission on Disabilities, general expenses, $620. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Library, wages and salaries, 543329 General expenses, 59800 Books, 85000 Hold. Hold. Okay. Uh, then I'll recognize Steve Crowley from advisory. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I would like to uh, move that number at $90,000 in consultation with the uh, library director and the town manager. Uh, it was 
the, the, what the library has to do is spend at least 15% of the total budget on books, and this would not have done it, so we're recommending 90,000. Is there a second? second? Chair has second. All those in favor of the three line items, including $90,000 uh, for books, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. The ayes have it. Lydia Drake Library, general expenses, $5,000. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Recreation Commission, wages and salaries, 111403 General expenses, 12080 All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Community Center, wages and salaries, I'm sorry, general expenses only, 43136 All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Herring Fisheries, general expenses, $1,800. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Town Landing, wages and salaries, 42000 General expenses, 1600 All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Town Clock Winder, wages and salaries, $1,517. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Town Memorial Committee, uh, general expenses, $5,000. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Plymouth County Cooperative, general expenses, $107. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Historical Commission, $2,000. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Maturing Debt Principal, 932019 All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Maturing Debt Interest, 287088 All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Maturing Debt Principal Excluded, General expenses, $1,489,331. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Maturing debt interest excluded. General expenses, $493,506. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Short-term interest, $45,500. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Plymouth County Retirement, $3,370,446. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Unemployment compensation, $150,000. General expenses. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Group health insurance. General expenses, $8,699,639. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Group life insurance, general expenses, $20,000. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Medicare tax, general expenses, $551,250. All those in favor, please say aye. All those opposed, no, the ayes have it. Property and liability insurance, $670,000. General expenses, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. On the total motion by Steve Curley, which indicated where all these funds were coming from, we amended one item. On the motion by Steve Curley, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it, and I declare it. So voted. I think we will, uh, Mr. Boyle moves that we, the annual town meeting stand in recess and we will go to the special town meeting. And you should have before you the special town meeting warrant. All right, first article item of business is Article 4. Chair recognizes Steve Curley from advisory. Mr. Moderator, I move to appropriate $38,000 from free cash 
for the repair of the pummeling pipes, pump, and fixtures at the Pembroke Police Station located at 80 Center Street. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Steve Curley, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article three is the next item of business. Mr. Moderator. The chair recognizes Linda Peterson. I move that the town take no action on Article Three. Second. Motions and made and seconded. The motion to take no action, just uh, for those who aren't familiar with it, um, are us is usually made just when all departments agree that uh, there's no action to be ne needed to be taken on a particular item. In this case, the uh, chair is of the understanding that there is no contract in place yet, so there's nothing to vote on. But again, that's your decision. So all those in favor of the motion to take no action on Article Three. Please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 1 in the special. And the chair recognizes Maria Karras from advisory. Mr. Moderator, I move that the sum of 269852 is appropriated to supplement fiscal year 2019 appropriation and to fund this supplement that 50000 be transferred from free cash to the account for police wages and salaries, 80000 be transferred from overlay surplus to the account for police wages and salaries, 20000 be transferred from health insurance to the account for police wages and salaries, 35,000 be transferred from free cash to the account for police department general expenses. 10,000 be transferred from free cash to the account for fire general expenses. 20,000 be transferred from DPW wages and salaries to the account for DPW general expenses. 19,852 be transferred from free cash to the account for community center wages salar and salaries and 35,000 be transferred from free cash to the account for unemployment general expenses. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, it needs a simple majority vote. All those in favor of the motion on Article 1 by advisory, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Last item of business is Article 2. Chair Smart. recognizes Steve Walsh from advisory. Move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of $1,256.70 to provide for the sum of unpaid bills for fiscal year 2018 printed in Article 2 of the special town meeting warrant. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, to pay an unpaid bill, we need a nine-tenths vote. All those in favor of the motion by Steve Curley, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. And I declare it unanimous, which is better than nine tenths, and so voted. And Mr. Boyle moves that the special town meeting stand adjourned with no second. time or place certain. Is there a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it, and the special is a, uh, complete and we will go back to the annual town meeting and we have the lottery system. First number, first article is article 12. Which is on page five of the warrant. And the chair recognizes Steve Curley from advisory. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town amend the general bylaws as most recently amended by deleting Article 7, Officers, Town Administrator. Motion's been made and seconded. This is to lead a reference to a position we no longer have. So anyone who wants to uh, act in favor of the motion by Steve Curley, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 36. Which 
which is on page 24 of the warrant. And the chair recognizes Kathleen Keegan, who is, let me see if I get this right, chair of the Pembroke Fund Committee. Fund Committee. <laughs> chair recognizes Kathleen Keegan. Hi. Uh, move that the town appropriate from Camp Pembroke Fund the sum of $7,000 and that said funds be used by Pembroke Celebrates with Fireworks for the purposes of funding a fireworks display. Second. Uh, may, motions are made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion by Kathleen, please raise your hand. All those opposed, the ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 5 is the next item of business. Mr. Moderator. Chair recognizes Linda Peterson from advisory. Move that the town appropriate the sum of 1,922,368 from solid waste revenue to fund the fiscal year 20 solid waste enterprise fund as shown on appendix C of the 200 of the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Is there a second? second. Chair has second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion by Linda Peterson, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. <laughs> Good. Article 14. Chair recognizes the newest member of advisory. The chair welcomes Kelly Seifert. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. No, that's, that's correct. I'm sorry. Chair recognizes Kelly Seifert. Motion to uh, motion for Article 14, two-thirds vote. Move that the town transfer the care, custody, management, and control of the tax title parcels of land identified in Article 14 of the May 2019 annual town meeting warrant from the interim town manager and or treasurer as the custodian of tax title parcels to the Conservation Commission for the purpose of conservation and passive recreation purposes under the provisions of GLC48C. Second. Second. Motions been made and seconded by Kelly. Is there any discussion on this matter? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Kelly, please raise your hand. Opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Uh, unanimous, yes, thank you. Article 3 is the next item of business. Oh, we did it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Article 6 is the next item of business. Chair recognizes Steve Curley. Okay, there's actually five motions on this. Uh, thank you, yeah. This will take five motions to complete, and Steve will, will, will take the first one, and we'll do one at a time. Mr. Moderator, I move that the sum of $698,300 be appropriated to fund capital projects and equipment in accordance with the capital budget scheduling appearing in Article 6 of the warrant, excluding school department technology, six-wheel dump truck, mill pond road dan drainage, recycling center roadway and roof, and that to meet this appropriation, $698,300 be transferred from the Capital Projects Stabilization Fund. Second. Motions been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, and this requires a two-thirds vote because it's a uh, transfer from stabilization funds. Um, all those in favor of the motion by Steve Curley, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds needed for passage. The chair recognizes Steve Curley. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town appropriate $250,000 to pay costs of technology for the use of the school department, 
including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount under, the, under and pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 7-9, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of, of the town thereafter. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, less any such premium applied to the payment of the costs of, of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing, those, uh, seeing no none, um, this also requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand, and I declare it so voted uh, unanimous. Uh, chair recognizes Steve Curley. Mr. Roder moderator, I move that the town appropriate $250,000 to pay costs of purchasing a six-wheeled dump truck for the use of the Department of Public Works, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, $90,000 shall be transferred from funds borrowed to pay costs of the following project for which such amount is no longer needed to complete the project for which it was borrowed. $90,000 from the Route 14 drainage approved at the October 27, 2015 meeting. It was Article 9, Action 11. And the Treasurer, with the approval of the Selectmen, is authorized to borrow $160,000 under the in pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7-1, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds and notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the costs of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 20 thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Motion's been made and seconded. This again requires a two-thirds vote because it's a borrowing authorization. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds needed for passage. The chair recognizes Steve Curley. Mr. Moderator. Move that the town appropriate $40,000 to pay costs associated with Mill Pond Road drainage and the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, $40,000 shall be transferred from the following project for which such amount is no longer needed to complete the project for which it was borrowed. $40,000 from the high school drainage from the October 27, 2015 town meeting Article 8, Action 7. Is there a second? Second. Chair has second. Any discussion on the motion, which needs a simple majority? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Chair recognizes Steve Curley. Mr. Moderator, move that the town appropriate $91,818 to pay costs of the replacement, repair, or improvement of the Recycling Center roadway and the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and the costs of roof replacement and the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, $91,818 shall be transferred from solid waste surplus. Any discussion on this matter? Seeing none, this needs a simple majority as well. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. And we move to Article 9. Okay. So this is the uh, one of several uh, articles that is on the consent agenda and again, several years ago, we established this, through this uh, consent agenda through a town bylaw that allows us to, to dispose of non-controversial items uh, more quickly by doing them as one. 
So the items on the consent agenda, and you have that as part of your warrant, uh, it is not Article 7, but it is Articles 1, 8, 9, and 33. 1, 8, 9, and 33. Now this is your decision. If you choose to take any of those uh, separately, please indicate that now. Otherwise, we'll take them as a group. Again, Articles 1, 8, 9, and 33. It requires a four-fifths to take them out of order. No, seven. seven is going to be considered separately. Um, so Steve Curley moves that the town take articles 1, 8, 9, and 33 out of order and that they be passed by consent in accordance with the motions shown on the consent agenda distributed this evening. Is there a second? second. second. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, please say no. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. The town clerk, Peg Struzik, uh, to my right, along with the assistant town clerk, Andrea McKetrick, um, Peg informs me that we had 240 people check in, so which is great. We've got about 13,000 registered voters, but our quorum is 150, so I'll look at the glass half. So thank you for coming. Uh, next item of business is Article 11. Mr. Moderator. And the chair recognizes Linda Peterson from advisory. Move that the town amend the general bylaws as most recently amended by revising Article 4, I mean, <laughs> offices, boards, and committees by deleting section 14 and section 16 as printed in the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Second. You see the uh, explanation in the warrant. Is there any discussion on this matter? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Linda Peterson, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it and I declare it so voted. Article 19. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator. Chair recognizes Andrew Wandell, who is the vice chair of the planning board. I move that the town amended zoning bylaws as most recently amended by amending section three, establishment of district section nine, non-residential frontage, by allowing use of all streets for frontage in industrial districts A and B as printed in the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Second. Motions been made and seconded. The chair has been informed that at a hearing on March 25th, the planning board voted unanimously as required by law to uh, endorse this proposal. The chair recognizes Andy Wandell. Yeah, this, what this does is allows in uh, industrial districts A and B the use of um, unapproved roads for frontage uh, for the lots in those districts only. So it only affects districts A and B, and in this case, or in many cases, uh, the applicant will not have to go seek a variance to get frontage. So it streamlines, streamlines the process for them. Any further discussion on this matter? The chair recognizes Tom. Gerard Golden. Uh, my question is, we're talking about districts A and B. Just industrial districts A and, A and B. A and B, and that's up in the north Pembroke area? That's correct. Okay, that clarifies it. Jerry Golden, excuse me. Uh, any further discussion on this matter? Seeing none, this requires uh, a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of the motion by Andy Wandell, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. The meeting will be in a very brief recess. <coughs> meeting will come to order. The uh, next item of business is Article 35. Ginny. 
know Ginny Wandel was going to make the motion. So if she's temporarily out, then the chair will recognize Linda Peterson from advisory. It's a petition Ms. article, Article 35. Mr. Moderator, move that the town appropriate from free cash the sum of $5,000 to contract with the South Shore Community Action Council to provide services to residents of the town. Any discussion on this article? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Linda, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it and I declare it so voted. Article 33. That was oh, we did that one, thank you. Our high-tech system here. Article 24 is the next item of business. Article 24 is on page 16 of the warrant. The chair recognizes Andy Wandell from the planning board. I move that the town amend its zoning bylaws as most recently amended by amending section 4.7.B, Center Protection District, uses permitted by special permit by adding assisted living facilities to those uses that may be allowed in the Center Protection District by special permit as printed in the 2019 annual meeting warrant. Is there a second? The motion's been made and seconded. The chair has been informed that on March 25th, as required by law, the planning board had a hearing and voted unanimously to adopt the uh, uh, amendment. Um, the chair recognizes Andy Wandell. Yeah, this simply um, allows um, assisted living centers as uh, an allowed use in the center protection district by special permit. Any further discussion on this matter? The chair recognizes. Hi, Jean Gelati, Jean. Mountain Avenue. Will, if a uh, assisted living goes into the center protection, are they going to have to go in front of their center protection board to make sure that they meet all the necessary requirements? Yes. Chair recognizes Andy Wandell. Yes, they'd have to go before the planning board for the special permit and for a site plan. Any further discussion? Seeing none, this requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of the motion by Andy Wandell, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds needed for passage. And the next item is Article 29. Uh, planning board has informed the chair that Articles 26 and 29 uh, are related and that we should be taking Article 26 up first, so that's your call. So uh, Andy Wandell moves that Article 29, action on Article 29 be postponed till after Article 26. Again, that requires a four-fifths. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, the ayes have it, and we will hold Article 29 until Article 26. Oh, boy. Article 22. The 22 is on page 15 of the warrant. The chair recognizes Becky Coletta, chairman of the planning board. I move that the town amend its zoning bylaws as most recently amended by amending section 4.3.d.2, business district A, dimensional regulations, and section 6.j, separability to correct typographical errors as printed in the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Is there a second? second. Chair has second. A chair has been informed that on March 25th, the planning board voted unanimously to endorse this proposed bylaw change. The chair recognizes Becky Coletta from the planning board. This is probably the simplest of the bylaws we have here tonight. It really is just to correct typographical errors. Any discussion on this matter? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Becky, again, requires a two-thirds. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. 
all those opposed please raise your hand the eyes have it and i declare it so voted having reached the necessary two thirds necessary for passage next item is article seventeen on page eight of your warrant i'm sorry um, Yep. Mr. Page Moderator. Eight. Chair recognizes Linda Peterson. Move that the town amend Schedule C of the Classification and Compensation Bylaw as listed and printed in Appendix D of this warrant by adding one dollar to each step to the, wa to the wage rate of Council on Aging van drivers, SC 13. Second. Motions have made and seconded. You voted on the uh, wage and classification bylaw earlier. This is an amendment to that. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 25. Article 25 is on page 17 of the warrant um, and the chair recognizes John um, Scholl, excuse me, from planning board. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town amend its zoning bylaws as most recently amended by amending section five special provisions, standards and procedures, paragraph 1C, signs, permit requirements, by requiring signs for commercial uses visible from a public way to include street numbers as printed in the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Second. The uh, chair has been informed that on March 25th, the planning board is required by law, uh, un voted unanimously to endorse this bylaw change. The chair recognizes John Scholl. Uh, this is a safety requirement uh, that the fire department, when they were getting calls, uh, especially in, in multi-unit developments, uh, sometimes can struggle to find places without the uh, signs, so it's a yeah, okay. safety concern. Any further discussion on this article, which again uh, requires a two-thirds vote? All those in favor of the motion by John Scholl, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds needed for passage. And the next item of business is... Article 10. Article 10 is on page 5. The chair recognizes Steve Walsh from Advisory Committee. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Move that the town amend the general bylaws that most recently amended by revising Article 4, Officers, Boards, and Committees, Section 12, as printed in the 2019 Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Steve Walsh, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 1, we did. Article 8. Oh, no, that's consent. consent as well. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Article 18. Article 18 is on page 8 of your warrant, and the chair recognizes Becky Coletta from the planning board. I move that the town amend its zoning bylaws as most recently amended by adding a new section 5.13, age qualified cluster development special permits, as printed in the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. The chair recognizes Becky Coletta. So there's been a lot of talk around town about this particular um, bylaw, so I won't belabor it too much. This is a um, a bylaw that would permit development with a special permit that would include site plan review of clustered residential housing units while preserving 50% of the property at issue as open space 
requiring a minimum of 10% of the housing be affordable, deed restricted affordable to help um, preserve our housing limits required under 40B. It would also limit the number of units to the same number that the developer can demonstrate would be single family homes built on the same, num same property. So they'd actually have to do a subdivision plan and show the planning board that they're not building any more units in the clustered development than they would be able to build on the same property as single family homes using our standard zoning bylaws for single family development. We also um, had included in here that the town would have a right to enforce the deed restrictions on the 50% of open space so that it would remain open space. This would be within the control of the town to enforce that. There are other um, provisions in here about site plan and special permit processes and happy to speak to any questions that anybody may have. Thank you. The chair has been informed that on April 8th, the planning board had a hearing in this matter and uh, unanimously voted to support the amendment bylaw. The chair recognizes Dan Tribuco from the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just want the, the, the folks town meeting to know that uh, I fully support this bylaw, the zoning bylaw change. Uh, the, the planning board has made a great effort to be thoughtful and logical about what's going to happen at the Pembroke Country Club. But we can't create a spot zoning bylaw, so we have to be inclusive of a few other parcels and land uh, to have a zoning bylaw that's not spot zoning. Mm -hmm. So the, the planning board has done that too and accomplished that with this bylaw. They've also accomplished uh, being able to save the golf course. If, if we don't have this bylaw change, the owners of the golf course can create this cluster zoning on their own using 40B if they like. They could do a few other things too. They could tear down the golf course and put houses up around the whole thing. They could also put cluster type houses around the whole golf course with chapter 40B. Heck, we've been fighting the chapter 40B project up in Water Street for years and it's the state is against us every step of the way because they want, they want affordable housing in town. So another thing that this bylaw accomplishes is it saves the golf course, allows the developer to make money. This is America, capitalism is the way we work, so we do like that, but it saves the golf course, creates, it keeps open space, and it also creates 10% affordable housing so that we don't fight Chapter 40B in places we don't want them. So this bylaw is very well thought out, and it's not just for the, the golf course, but it works particularly well at the golf course. So I support this bylaw change, and I hope you do too. Chair recognizes the gentleman to my right. David Skolnick. Excuse me, Skolin? Skolnick. Skolnick. It's a beautiful bylaw. It's lovely, it's got detail, it's well written. It's, it's got everything lovely. But on page 11, section five, conveyance of open land, Section B, C, C, thank you dear. Uh, subject to the approval of the Board of Health as otherwise required by law, the Planning Board may permit the open land to be used for subsurface waste disposal, where the Planning Board finds that such use would not be detrimental to the character or quality of the open land. I believe there is no such use that would not be detrimental to the character of the open land. And I would love to see us get rid of the Paragraph there, C. Well, the chair would say if you're proposing that as an amendment, we need to have that in writing on the form that's in the front here okay. um, and just give town council a chance to review it. Um, if he does need to review it, um, chair recognizes. Stephanie Skolnick, Stephanie. Captain Tory Lane. Um, could someone just explain what it means? What, what does um, what does that mean, subsurface waste disposal? Just for clarification for the rest of the meeting, just once again, just refer, cite that section that you were talking about, because I may not be the only one who didn't follow where it was. Page 11, 5C. Thank you. 
Chair recognizes Becky Collette. I just want to respond to that briefly. Um, subsurface waste disposal, I see we have Lisa Cullity, our health agent, who can go into more detail. But just from the planning board's perspective, part of our thinking there is that Title V systems, septic systems, that's what we're talking about here, are generally below ground, below grade. And so from a visual and from a use perspective, we don't believe that they would affect the um, use of the open space. The, the planning board is correct. Every single one of us has a subsurface disposal system in our yard, everyone's sitting here. And the reason I know that is, uh, with exception of apartments being Pembroke Woods, um, no one has a centralized facility. Everyone at every house has a subsurface disposal system in your yard. To answer the planning board, when you do cluster housing, this is very common on Nantucket and other areas, much green space is where the subsurface disposal would be. Um, depending on how it's designed, it can become parking, it can become park and recreation, it can become open green space, it can become a lot of things, and presents no public health threat nor any threat to the, to the people using the property. The property can remain usable so long as the design criteria is met, which would have to be done because even if this article passes, the applicant would still have to appear before the Board of Health and demonstrate that the system is safe and appropriate for whatever use they propose afterwards. Chair recognizes Steve Curley. Mr. Moderator, the uh, advisory committee had voted for favorable action on this article. Chair recognizes Patrick Chilcott. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I think it's important for town meeting to understand a couple of things about this article. Um, as I understand it, it only actually uh, affects six parcels, is that correct? Yes. And it, more importantly, I chaired a joint budget subcommittee uh, this year with the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee. We are always, we are, we are desperate for new sources of revenue in this town, right? This year we will lay off 10.6 school department employees. The town is struggling, desperately struggling to find new sources of revenue. One of the things that this bylaw will do is it will raise a million dollars in recurring revenue with this one development. Now, I understand some folks may not be for the development, it is a smaller development. I also chaired a subcommittee about three years ago that looked at revenue in the town. And the best we could do was potentially sell a plot of land or sell a piece of land that was one time. Passage of this article guarantees the town of Pembroke a million dollars a year recurring. It's not one time, it's a million dollars in recurring revenue. That is something that is desperately needed in these fiscal times. And it's something that I want you all to think about when you go to vote. I will also tell you that the school committee members were very supportive of this article from both the revenue perspective as well as the thought that the planning board put into it. This will allow us to be sure that we do not have to care for roads. Uh, it, it lessens the impact on town services. Uh, the police department and the fire department both came out in support of this at the meeting that I was with, um, with the board of selectmen. So it's not often that you get every town department or most town departments behind one individual article. This happens this time, and I'd ask you to support it. Thank you. Chair recognizes this gentleman. If you could Joseph, say your name. Joseph Lanzalotta, Jr., builder of the Pembroke Country Club, and my father and uncle, and, and you're going to destroy the most beautiful spot in town by putting these cluster homes in there. Uh, a few years back, a, a builder bought the golf course and ran it in the ground. Now another builder's going to buy it. And how do we know how, what he's going to do? He's going to do what he says or what's going to happen? Uh, it's just a shame that this was allowed to, be, be, to happen, you know? And it breaks my heart to see this happen. And my father's request was this to remain the golf course forever. So please. Let's do something to keep the golf course. Let the town buy it or something. Chair recognizes Doc Iacobucci. <clears throat> Simple question. Uh, as the director of a senior housing facility in Pembroke for the last 40 years, what is the age that you're referring to? It doesn't specify the age. Chair recognizes Becky Coletta. It, in the bylaw itself, it does. In more than one place, it says that at least one resident of the dwelling unit must be over the age of 55. 
and that would be a requirement, a minimum requirement. The condo association and the special project could also um, make it a requirement that all of the residents be over the age of 55. On consultation with town council, it did not seem um, advisable to put that into the bylaw, but that is something that could be part of the process that is brought to us as projects are brought to us by specific developer um, for a specific project. Could I briefly also speak to the issue of the golf course? Yeah. Um, on the golf course, we've looked at a lot of uh, options there. We spent a lot of time working on this article and our feeling was that this is the only way to save the golf course and to save a lot of open space there. There's over 150 acres, over 160 acres, I think, there. It has two means of egress. It would be very easy for a developer to come in and put this many single-family homes, three, four, five bedrooms each. Um, they would not, given the economics of it, be likely to preserve very much, if any, open space. Sometimes when subdivisions come before the planning board, one of the things we can do is actually um, negotiate for open space to be donated to the town when there's landlocked um, property at the back of the acceptable roadway. But because this space has two forms of egress onto dwelling in West Elm, we can't um, do that very easily. So we believe this is in fact the only way to save the golf course at this point. Thank you. Chair recognizes Jean Gelati. Um, obviously you guys spent a lot of time on this. I just have a couple of questions, comments. Um, for clarification, so let's say that they have a 50 acre parcel and 10 acres are wet, that leaves 40 acres. For easy math, it's just like you need an acre to have a buildable lot. So that means there's gonna be 40 acres on, 40 units on 25 acres. Is that correct? Chair recognizes Becky Coletta. Roughly, yes. And then there's gonna be 25 acres deemed open land, safe Well, land, no, in your land. example, if there's 10 that's wetlands, um, then that doesn't count towards the open space. Oh, it doesn't? I don't think so. It does? Oh, okay, yes, you're right. Okay. But they would only get the 25 units based on the fact that, I mean the 20 units based on the fact that only 40 is buildable. Build okay, so they only get, they get, if you get 40 acres of usable land, they get 40 units. Yes. yes. Okay. And then, sorry, um, I should have gone through the chair. My biggest concern with this is, I know you said there'd be a deed restriction recorded. I read this several times, and I know it says that the conveyance of land on page 11, number 5A, the open land shall be conveyed to either the, the conservation or a nonprofit conservation organization or a corporation, trust, or association owned, blah, blah, blah. I don't see anything that says, oh, and by the way, there's going to be a deed restriction placed on this that says you will never, ever be able to build on it. Because we all know what happens now and the, and the laws now doesn't mean that that's what the laws are gonna be in 20 years. Chair recognizes Becky Coletta. So in clause D, it says that um, there has to be a covenant or perpetual restriction of the type described above, and also um, through the Conservation Planning Board or other board can enforce the restrictions or easements imposed upon the open land. So, and as a condition of the special permit, that it's subject to a perpetual restriction. Perpetual, okay. Now, I, I wanna give someone else a no, chance. No, this is my last one, I okay. swear. Um, so, page 10 at the bottom. It is affordable housing, section C. It says the planning board in its discretion shall permit the applicant to provide the affordable housing units on the site of the development off site at a different location or through a payment to the town in lieu of units. Does this mean that they can have their 40 full priced houses and then have four affordable units wherever the heck they want? And if they don't do that, they can give the town X number of dollars and they won't have to have any affordable units. And if that's the case, I hate that because you are upping your amount of houses, but you're not upping your affordable. I think that I make a motion to strike that line out. 
that's a motion you wish to make. I need a second, and I also need it written down. Motion's been seconded, so if you can write it down. Do you need, Chair recognizes Becky Coletta. If I could just speak to that for a second. That was one that, first off, the board is the one who added in the affordability component. That was not in the original bylaw that was given to us to consider by town council. And we added it in because of the p issues we've had with 40B housing in this town and with the fact that we had done a housing production plan in conjunction with Old Colony Planning Council and we had promised Old Colony Planning Council and uh, the Department of Community Housing Development that we would be working towards increasing our affordable housing in town and this would help us be able to respond to 40B, unfriendly 40B projects. So we added the 10% where it what didn't exist before. So we are very committed to this idea as a planning board and we think the town should be as well. We added some flexibility on that point so that we could, um, if it didn't make sense on a particular development because it wasn't gonna be enough units to, you know, what if there's a smaller development than the country club? May not always make sense to do that rather than requiring variances, we left some discretion to give that money to some organization like the Housing Authority that might be able to better use that to increase affordable housing in Pembroke. And we think that that discretion makes sense to comply with our requirements for DHCD as well as to um, promote affordable housing in Pembroke in the way that makes the most sense. Chair recognizes Peg Struzik. Hi Becky, could I ask a question about the over 55? You said that one person in the family needs to be over 55. All right, does that mean that my kids who are in their 40s can go up there and move to Country Club and take me with them because I'm slightly over 55? <laughs> then they own the place, they're on the deed, I die, and they stay there? Chair recognizes Becky Coletta. Excuse me, so the um, the restriction in the conveyance is that one um, resident has to be over the age of 55 and that's mm -hmm. going to be memorialized in a deed restriction. So at that time, at that point, they would no longer be compliant with their deed restriction and so they would likely have to sell the property and make other arrangements. Um, a lot of times what you find in condo association rules mm -hmm. is that once the over 55 person passes away or moves away, that in fact that unit does have to be sold or they're in violation of their condo association rules. Well, I know Chair, there, Chair is, recognizes Peg there is one condo in town that has, the man has come in several times complaining to us, they have school buses coming up and down because that's not a restriction. My mother bought the house over 55, moved her kids in, she died, they kept the condo. So can we have something written in there that someone on the deed must be over 55? Chair recognizes Becky Coletta. Well, the bylaw is very specific that the restriction has to be in the deed. Which means I don't understand. Well, I can't I let this go okay. on too long. Okay. So how do we make sure this doesn't happen again, that we have school buses going up to over 55 community? It's in the bylaw. Chair recognizes, if you could state your name. Marjorie Baumler, Edward Drive. I'm sorry, Mar Marjorie Baumler, Edward Drive. I have a couple of questions, and I certainly respect the work that the people have put in for this, but I just think there's so much information that we don't know. Is How long has this been in, in process as far as thinking about it, about doing something like this whole thing says? How long has the, the group been studying? How long has the advisement group been working on this, or whoever is working on it? How, how, how many months, years, days, whatever? Chair recognizes Becky Coletta. Okay, somebody else may need to talk because people are gonna get tired of my voice. Um, this has been in process, I'd say, for about two or three months. It has not been forever. Mm -hmm. There were several public hearings that we held. We actually held one meeting that was exclusively about this. We also were at a public hearing at the Board of Selectmen to talk about it. It was a proposal that was brought to the Planning Board um, and then we consulted with Town Council and with other members of the community. One of the things that I'm quite um, happy to say tonight is that initially there was quite a bit of opposition from the people who abutted the golf course. And I think as they've looked at the options, 
for the golf course and for that portion of town, a lot of those abutters, I don't know how many, but a lot of those abutters have come to believe that this is best interest of their community. If we don't pass this tonight, um, there is a good chance that the developer at the golf course would go on and um, perhaps choose to diff do a different project at that location. Thank you. But I, I just would be very curious as to how many people feel fully informed about what's going on here. It seems like this thing is so long and so complicated that there has to be a little bit better understanding about what's happening. I think there's a lot of questions. And I was just raising that point as far as so many questions that aren't even in this, and this is, in a sense, almost a finished product. If we vote on it, this is what's going to happen. And it seems that there is enough question as far as little details that haven't been resolved. And I'm not going to make, well, I think I would make a motion to, uh, to table this for a, a little longer time to uh, study it more thoroughly and possibly, since we have now received this in print, that perhaps it would be better to do it after we have all had a, a better chance to, do, uh, to look into this a little more carefully. All right, the motion's been made to table this article, which is a proper motion. Uh, is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. It is not debatable. Uh, so we will take that up immediately. All those in favor, and again, I'm sorry, it's Marjorie. What? Baumler, B-A-U-M-L-E-R. I'm sorry, Marjorie, your, your last name? Baumler, B-A-U-M-L-E-R. Okay, that's for the purposes of the town clerk. Again, it requires a two-thirds. All those in favor of the motion to table this article, Article 18, please raise your hand. All those opposed to the motion, please raise your hand. The no's have it, and I declare it lost. Having reached the two-thirds majority, the chair recognizes Dan Tribuco and the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, so there was a question posed earlier about why didn't the town buy the, the golf course? Uh, the golf, the town of Pembroke had the first right of refusal. It was uh, $4.3 million. Uh, the town could have bought it. We had the right to buy it. Uh, but the debt service would have been to the tune of uh, $450,000 a year for that. And that's before we even started fixing up the golf course. There's a reason the golf course is closing, because they're losing money, they, right? So. The owner, the present owner of the golf course informed us that it's going to cost millions on top of the 4.3 million. So we already knew that there was going to be an annual payment by the town for debt service of 435,000. Perhaps from the school committee, would you want that? The two chiefs, would you want that? The town of Pembroke to buy just the golf course would have put a dent in every single department in town. So the Board of Selectmen did the reasonable thing. We passed on buying it. So now, the current owner of the property needs to get rid of it or get a cash infusion. And what did he do? He looked for a developer. And this certain developer came by with a plan on doing cluster housing. Now, I don't know this developer from a hole in the wall, but I will say one thing. He could have bought the property off the current owners and threw in this cluster housing under Chapter 40B, and there's not a darn thing we could have done about it. Not a darn thing we could have done about it. So he was responsible, he came to the planning board, he approached the planning board and said, listen, I wanna be a responsible contractor in town. Can we write a bylaw that allows me to keep the golf course and build this cluster housing? So I give the guy a lot of respect. I've never met the guy or the team, but until that one meeting, I had to give him a lot of respect. And the thought of this bylaw being rushed through you're darn right it's being rushed through because if we don't get it in this town meeting, the developer is just gonna go to chapter 40B and build the same exact project without any hope of over 55. Even though the over 55 was put in by the planning board and it's not, it's not a solid 55, the grandkids might wanna move in with that 55 year old, that's allowed. We need to have a little leeway uh, for these communities, for, the, for these type of developments. It's not all 55. It's not all 55 and over living there. The 55 and older, has, someone has to be there. 
but not everyone living there is going to be 55. So let's not think that it's going to be some kind of senior adult <laughs> community beyond that. I just want people to understand the reality. But again, this developer was responsible enough to come to us and ask for a bylaw. The, the planning board has been thoughtful and logical about it and added further restrictions uh, to help the town. And as Mr. Chilcott said earlier, this is going to bring in $1 million cash every single year in tax revenue. Police and fire have already chimed in and said that these type of developments historically do not have police and fire calls uh, the same as even a subdivision has. So it's, it's, a, it's a net positive for the community. And I think we should move forward on this and also the two amendments that were, that were raised, those amendments are going to hurt a developer, uh, maybe in this project, maybe in another one, and we need to have leeway. The planning board has special permit considerations, and they can negotiate. They can negotiate with a developer, but we have to have a way of uh, allowing the developer to make money. Can't be all restrictive on this. Uh, it's, a, it's a give and take. Uh, so please vote against the amendments, and vote for this bylaw. Chair recognizes Libby Bates, assessor and member of the Historic District Commission. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Moderator. I'm not particularly against this project. Uh, I know we need more housing. I would like to think that these units are gonna be affordable for retirees. A lot of them that are being built now aren't. You know, you have to come up with anywhere from four to six hundred thousand dollars for a lot of these units but that's not my question and and I ask this for clarification um, uh, one of the gentlemen who spoke a few minutes ago talked about waste disposal and if I understood the explanation correctly the waste disposal area would be on the open space land now another thing that I tie into this, and I asked about it at the public hearing, they talk about a deed restriction. They talk about if the open space is transferred to the town or to the Conservation Commission. If it, we're talking about a conservation deed restriction, and the word someone used, I think Jeannie used it in perpetuity, a conservation restriction, restriction in perpetuity is a deed restriction that can only be lifted by an act of the state legislature. They're meant to be very strict. They're meant to be restrictive. Um, so I, the language in here doesn't clarify what kind of a deed restriction it is. They just talk about a deed restriction. So. Um, that need, would need to be clarified. The other part of that is, if you're talking about using the open space for putting in the septic system, it no longer qualifies as conservation restricted land. It's developed, whether it's underground or above ground. You can't do that to a piece of conservation deeded restriction land. So I. And my question to the people who wrote this, some of the language is a little fuzzy, and I would, again, I'm not opposed to the project, but I would strongly recommend you clean up this language and that you understand that developing deed-restricted conservation land, you cannot put the septic system under that. For the purposes of addressing that specific question, Chair recognizes Becky Coletta. So just to be clear, Libby, the, um, the deed restriction is not conservation land. The deed restriction is to have open land, and there's a difference. When you build a subdivision, everybody has their house, and then they have some amount of the land that's open. What cluster housing does is it says, we're going to have um, the houses more closely built together, and then we're gonna have a lot of open land. In this case, we know that that open space is not gonna be conservation land. That open space is going to be a golf course. It's gonna be an operating golf course that's gonna be leased to the current owner of the golf course. So it's gonna be open land in that it's not gonna be built upon. And the deed restriction is to ensure that no one can build any housing on that property or any 
um, buildings on that property. It will be open space. For example, under Chapter 61, you can have open space that counts as Chapter 61 land. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's conservation land that any member of the public can utilize and that the public could do trails on. In this case, the 50% open space is open space. It is not conservation land. So I don't think the language is at all ambiguous. I think what it does is it does leave some discretion to the planning board in consultation with town council to come up with restrictions that preserve that for the town. Chair recognizes. Uh, well, I do, we have a lot of people, I'm not trying to cut anyone off, we have a lot okay. of people who want to speak. We can circle back if you want to, but I do um, want to get to the people who have not yet spoken. Chair recognizes the gentleman here. Uh, Greg Howell, uh, Country Club Circle. Um, I am a direct abutter to Pembroke Country Club. Um, I border a section of the course that's just actually a meadow. Um, my past, present, and future are invested into my home. Um, and when I first learned about this project, um, instinctively, I was against it. 100% against it, um, every, every part of it. Uh, I took the time to uh, talk to the planning board, attend planning board meetings, attend selectin meetings, spoke with the developer, spoke with the golf course owner, spoke with my neighbors, became educated on it. I, I guarantee you, if it was not a good and the best plan for this town, I'd be scratching and clawing and kicking and screaming to knock this back. This is the best thing for the town, period. That's it. The, this is a great bylaw that protects open space, puts money into the, into the system that it desperately is needed. Um, and, and really, I hope that you know, we don't have uh, a problem here with people bringing up you know, a lot of uh, amendments because you know, this is, I haven't heard many of Butters getting up and saying much, but it seems like everyone else that's getting up and speaking is from all over the town. Um, this, this is, this, if you're, if you're uh, abutting one of these parcels that qualifies for this, you're gonna hope that that parcel goes, goes this route. Um, it protects open space. I, I don't wanna have 40,000 square foot lots plastered all over the golf course. That's not what I bought. That's not, it, you know, at least this protects what I bought, what I invested in and what I continue to invest in. I have a family in town. Um, I wanna stay here and continue to be vested in this town. I, I, I went to every meeting, I asked questions, I spoke with people on the side, tried to educate myself, tried to educate other people. Um, and I can honestly tell you, you know, maybe every, no, every, every little thing that everybody wants isn't in this bylaw, but this is a good thing for the town. This is actually, I'll go, this is a great thing for the town. And we really shouldn't be fighting this back too much. This should be this should be passed pretty well, overwhelmingly, I think. So I just wanted to state that. Thank you. The chair recognizes. <laughs> Next speaker. Uh, yes, Deborah McCarthy, 199 Center Street. I just have a question on page nine, uh, letter E. Is there any way you can add? Um, all dwellings, accessory buildings, and dumpsters have a hundred foot minimum setback. This is like to protect the uh, existing residents that are living there currently. Okay, I, you can ask that rhetorically if you want to offer it as amendment. I keep, we still well, we have amendments on the table, but we can get to it. Um, but chair recognizes Becky Coletta. Um, one of the things that we found over the years with the planning board is if the bylaw is overly restrictive and doesn't leave the planning board some amount of discretion during site plan review and during special permit planning process, that then the developer has to go back to CBA for variances and it creates a lot more conflict between the town boards than we really want to see. And it doesn't necessarily solve a problem because whether you're at CBA or you're at planning board, you're talking to residents of the town who are trying to do what's best for the town. So the special permit planning process would have us look at things like, it's 50 feet, feet from the perimeter, but is that in the back of the property, the front of the property, what kind of buffer is there, what kind of landscape plan is there? So the board um, is recommending the 50 feet from the perimeter to give us some amount of discretion. It would still require special permit and site plan review. 
chair recognizes, and after all these years, I should remember your name, and the chair. Jim Kincaid. Jim Kincaid, chair recognizes 69 Jim Kincaid. Spring Street. I'd like to move the issue. issue. So the motion to move the question is always in order. It is not debatable. It takes a simple majority. All those, and if the motion passes, we end debate and we'll go to the votes. All those in favor of uh, the motion to move the question, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it and I declare it so voted and we will move on. The meeting will be in a brief recess. Uh, so the chair is uh, reminded by town council, uh, I, I'm, the, the previous speaker did offer an amendment. Uh, I don't remember if there was a second, but there is a scope question which uh, the chair has asked town council to address, uh, which would necessitate ruling the motion out of order. Uh, chair recognizes Joel Bard. Mr. Moderator, Joel Bard, town council. So in zoning articles, there's a particular, is this on? Yes. Yeah. There's a, a particular way of looking at what's within and without of the scope of the article. So this bylaw was advertised, debated, discussed with a 50-foot setback requirement. Doubling that setback to 100 feet has a, for every building and structure, dumpster, it's not so much of an issue, but um, doubling that requirement on a large parcel has a very substantial effect and uh, the property owner and prospective developer were involved in this process throughout understanding it was going to be a 50 foot setback. In my opinion, doubling that to 100 feet puts it outside of the scope of what was advertised and what's been discussed. Just as we sometimes see uh, in a clearer example, if you have a zoning bylaw that wants to increase, say the required frontage from uh, 50 feet to 100 feet and somebody gets up at town meeting and says I want to make it 150 feet, that would also be outside of the scope. So in this instance, uh, it's not a small change in my legal opinion, it's a significant change. Therefore, it's my opinion that this last amendment is outside of the scope of the bylaw that's been advertised. Thank you. Um, so we do have two amendments um, on the table and the first one, uh, and both of the amendments just need a simple majority, the main question needs two thirds. So uh, let me make sure the chair is correct in this. The motion made by Jean Gelati is to delete section 4C. Is that correct? No, not the whole thing. Five. Just the thing about, I'm sorry. Not the whole thing, just the thing about they don't have to have affordable housing on there. All right, so we're removing the words on a case by case basis. The planning board, in its discretion, shall permit the applicant to provide the affordable housing units on the site of the development off-site at a different location or through a payment to the town in lieu of units. That is what we want to delete, is what you're suggesting. Okay. So her motion has been made and seconded. Point Pardon of order. Uh, please state your point of order. I think you're asking for too much. And maybe we should ask Jean to clarify. Is it just off-site at a different location or through a payment to the town? Is it just those I two items? I want them to have 10% affordable units on-site. Not somewhere else, not paying the town, not blah, blah, blah. I want them to have 10% affordable units on-site. Right. So the motion's been made by Jean Gelati. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, the no's have it, I declare it lost. On the motion by David Skolnick to delete section 5C, that's on page 11, delete section 5C. Again, simple majority needed for this uh, amendment. All those in favor of the amendment, it's just to delete section 5C. Section 5C is in the warrant. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. 
All those opposed, please raise your hand. The no's have it, and I declare it lost. Now we go to the main motion, as moved by Becky Coletta, section 18, moved as printed in the warrant. This requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, the ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for <laughs> passage. Next item of business is two, we did. Article 34. Article 34 um, is an article we have routinely in the annual, um, at the annual town meeting, which allocates money for certain projects to be funded through the Community Preservation Fund. We have A, B, C, D, uh, four recommendations, and we will take them separately as separate articles. And the chair would recognize for the purposes of making a motion on recommendation A, Lisa Colody, who is the chairman of the Community Preservation Committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. 34A, move to appropriate the sum of 4,400 from fiscal 20 annual budgeted reserves and that said funds be used by the trustees of the Pembroke Historical Society for historic purposes for the restoration of the Brick Kiln Shipyard Marker located at 101 Brick Kiln Lane in Pembroke. Is there a second? Second. Chair is second. Any discussion on the motion by Lisa? See none. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Recommendation B, the chair recognizes Lisa Cullody. Move to appropriate the sum of $25,000 from fiscal 20 annual budgeted reserves and that said funds be used by the trustees of the First Church for historic purposes for phase three of ongoing restoration, including attic ceiling, clock tower, bell tower restoration, and window replacement. Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article uh, recommendation C, the chair recognizes Lisa Cullody. Move to appropriate the sum of 40,000 from fiscal 20 open space reserves that said funds to be used by the Pembroke Public Schools for open space and recreational purposes for phase one, part two of the athletic fields project to include fencing on the softball field at Pembroke High School. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Recommendation D, Chair recognizes Lisa Cullody. Move to appropriate the sum of $47,350 from fiscal 20 annual budgeted reserves that said funds be used by the town manager for historical purposes, for the replacement of rotted wood around the windows and doors, and for replacement of the fire egress at the GAR Hall, also known as the Pembroke Police Boys Club, on Center Street. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 20. Article 20 is on page 14. Chair recognizes Tom Irving from the planning board. Move that the town amend the zoning bylaws as most re recently amended by amending section four, use and dimensional regulations, section two, residential commercial district, paragraph B, uses permitted by special permit, sub subparagraph three, by adding assisted living facilities as a use allowed by special permit as printed in the 2019 town meeting warrant. 
Second. Second. Motions is made and seconded to the chair has been informed that the planning board held a hearing as required by law on March 25th and uh, voted unanimously to support uh, the article. The chair should point out it's not required by law that they unanimously support the article. It is required by law that they have a hearing and that's why the chair mentions it. Uh, chair recognizes Tom Irving. This amendment will streamline the process for special permits <coughs> in the residential commercial district by naming the planning board as a special permit granting authority and eliminating a two-step process for multi-unit dwellings involving the planning board and the zoning board of appeals. It also includes assisted living facilities among the uses allowed by special permit. The, we voted unanimously on March 29th to recommend this amendment. Any discussion on this item, which requires a two-thirds vote because it is a bylaw change? All those in favor of the motion by Tom Irving, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Um, point of order, I don't know how State to say this. point of order. How do I make a motion to reconsider an article? The chair would not allow a motion to reconsider an article unless there was new and substantial information that would require um, a second look. So absent that, reconsideration is not allowed. Okay. Thank you. Chair recognizes, I mean, uh, Article 13 is the next item. Mr. Moderator. Chair move, recognizes Maria Caddis. I move that the town create a new revolving fund in accordance with Mass General Law C44, Section 53E, one half, into which receipts for the clerk's online licensing program shall be deposited and from which the disbursements in amount which shall not exceed 20,000 for fiscal year 2020 may be expended in connection with the upkeep and maintenance of the online licensing program and further amend the general bylaws article X to, to A, revolving funds to include the fund and the relevant information required by statute. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Maria, please raise your hand. Opposed? The ayes have it and I declare it so voted. Article 16. Chair recognizes um, Library Director Deborah Wall. Well, <laughs> <laughs> little prompt. Library Director and uh, website specialist uh, Deborah Wall. Move that the town amend Schedule C of the classification and compensation bylaw as printed in the warrant and further to raise and appropriate from taxation the sum of $28,830 to be added to the amounts voted under library wages and salaries under Article 3 of this meeting. Is there a second? second. Chair, his second. Chair recognizes Deborah Wall. This is an article we've been working on for several years in fiscal 12, the position, and this, the position is the adult services reference librarian. It was a point, it was approved in fiscal 12. It is a part-time position right now. Fortunately, we have managed to get it over 19 hours, so that's great. But this article would allow us to fund it at a full-time level. Uh, I recognize that there has been no money put aside in the town budget for this position right now, which is a recurring theme. It's what we had last year as well, but I want to just make the point of how necessary this is. So if I could just take a brief minute. Um, for people who don't follow us on social media, every year we do an annual report on the events that happen at the library. And in calendar year 2018, there were over 100,000 visits to the library. There were 12,533 people that attended programs at the library and 477 programs. Of those 477 programs, over 155 of them were arranged and or moderated 
by this part-time reference librarian. This position, this person, Stephanie McBain, has managed in just over three years to double adult attendance at the library as a part-time librarian. It would be a huge gain to get this funded full-time. Again, I recognize that months, monies have not been put aside to do that. Chair recognizes Dan Fabuco. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, so, so the folks at town meeting know uh, this board, the town manager, town accountants, advisory, uh, all the department heads, have been working hard to modernize how the Pembroke Town of Government works. No bigger change than town manager itself. And one of the changes that we need to do to grow up as a community is to not have raises being done on town meeting floor. They need to be done with a professional manager with a department head in their office discussing with the town accountant. We cannot have town meeting run like it was in the 1970s or 80s. We need to modernize the town. We've been trying to do it for the last couple of years. We've made great strides in this article, and it, it, it pains me to go against the library, the school, children. I mean, I, I, I look like a bad guy, but <laughs> this type of article needs to stop. We need to stop doing business this way, and it needs to stop with this one. Chair recognizes Steve Walsh, an advisory. Uh, we, uh, we move to take no action uh, on this article, uh, only because it's not funded. Uh, uh, we don't have the close, closer. It's on. I think you just have to move it closer. We move. We move to take no action on this. Uh, mainly because it hasn't been funded in the budget. We're not approving any new positions at this time. Chair recognizes. Um, Jillian Taylor, Ruth Road. Um, I just wanted to point out that we just voted to spend $72,350 on privately owned um, entities in the center, which are, yes, historical buildings, but have their own means of revenue, um, a church and the boys club. We don't own them, but we just spent $72,350 to renovate them, which is great. But I feel like it's really interesting that we are willing to do that again and again, um, but we won't fund a library where people, you might not go to the library, but a lot of people do. I think it's interesting when you say that we shouldn't take these types of things into town meeting anymore. This is not okay. The library is apparently not okay, but we can fund church renovations and things like that. I just wanted to point out that I think that's absurd. Chair recognizes Steve Carell. Mr. Moderator. <laughs> just, just, to, just to clarify as a point of information, the community preservation funds cannot be used to fund the town government. It's a special act that, is a, uh, that was enacted uh, about 10, 15 years ago, and we actually do get it. I think it's down to 15% now state funding on that. But this is something that uh, we cannot use for, for, for actually uh, paying salaries. They, it is a very restrictive that it has to be used for uh, open space, um, housing, historical, and um, recreation. Those are the only four uses that we can use on it, and it's a very restrictive. So uh, when, you, when you, you're comparing apples to oranges here, um, and you know, while we certainly would like to, you know, we've made great strides in the past year with uh, uh, partly using um, the ambulance fund. We added uh, two new firefighters, and we've added four new police officers in the past year. Hopefully, within the next year or two, we can uh, do something more. But at this point, uh, we do not have available funds for this. Chair recognizes Town Accountant Mike Buckley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'd like to ask everyone to turn to page 31. And um, about halfway down the page is unemployment compensation. And you'll notice that in fiscal 19, the amount was 100,000. And in fiscal 20, the amount, were was the, the amount that was recommended and the amount that you voted was 150,000. The reason for that is because the fiscal 20 school department budget will require reductions in staffing. And that is the reason that uh, neither advisory nor the, nor the um, Board of Selectmen voted to recommend this article. 
it doesn't make sense to have one department adding staff or increasing the hours of staff why another department, the largest department in town, is having reductions in staff. Chair recognizes the gentleman here. Uh, David Sullivan, I live on Littles Avenue. Um, I'm just wondering why Article 17, we voted to raise the wages for the van drivers, and that was okay, uh, but we're not able to approach this for raising the salary of the librarian. I don't know if, I know the Board of Selectmen said we're supposed to be not doing stuff like this anymore, but we just did it earlier tonight. Chair recognizes Mike Buckley for purposes of answering that question. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The um, Council on Aging, ha um, through the Town Manager's Office, has an arrangement with the MBTA and the state and the Greater Attleboro Transportation Authority, where they have their own funding source for this $1 increase, whereas the library does not. Chair Rick, and, uh, any further discussion? Uh, Mike Broadbent, uh, West Elm Street. Uh, I have a question uh, to the uh, plan, uh, advisory committee gentleman that just got up and said that uh, one of the things you could transfer uh, funds from w was for uh, recreation. Well, um, for me, reading is recreation. I don't understand why you can't do that. Chair recognizes Steve Curley. Mr. Moderator, through you to the prior speaker. Um, the state has defined what recreation is under the Community Preservation Act, and the recreation here would be uh, something like a ball field, soccer field, and things like that. It's, again, it's a state regulated, and they define it. Uh, unfortunately, libraries are not included with it, or we could do a lot more with the library that would, I'm sure they'd love to have. Thanks for the clarification, but that's a mistake. <laughs> Chair recognizes Lisa Cullity. I was just going to re reiterate what Mr. Curley said. The parameters on which CPC funding can be spent are very narrow. They're very specific. That's why there's a committee that reviews them. But let's pretend the library was recreational. Again, a decision made by the state, not made by us. Even if it was, funding of personnel is absolutely excluded. So regardless of whether we considered it recreation or not, um, CPC has no mechanism to fund personnel of any kind in any department at any time. Any further discussion? Yes. Sean Fitzpatrick, Ruth Road. John. Sean. Sean. Uh, I just want to point out, um, I understand what you're saying about the funding and everything, but this position was voted on seven years ago. For the last seven years, the funding has been pushed off and pushed off, and every year it's, we'll try to do it next year, we'll try to do it next year. At what point are we going to get to actually funding a position that was approved seven years ago? <clears throat> Any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion has been made by Library Director Deborah Wall to fund this position. It's been seconded. It requires a majority vote. All those in favor of the motion by Deborah, Please raise your hand. All those opposed? Ooh, too close, too close. We'll have to do a standing count. Uh, it is really too close. So I'd ask the tellers, having forewarned the tellers that we may have to do a lot of zoning votes, uh, we got by with none, but this is an important item as well. So I'd ask all those in favor of the motion by Deborah Wall, please stand and remain standing until counted. Mary Hill, 30, yes. Judith Graham, 13, yes. Judith Graham, 13, yes.
Ellen Davison, 20, yes. Pat, Pat Cowardy, 18, yes. Thank you all, you can be seated. All those opposed to the motion, please stand and remain standing until counted. Ellen Davison, 13, no. Mary Hill, 10, no. Judith Graham, Judith Graham, 25, no. Pat Cowardy, 17, no. Thank you, you can be seated. Uh, the inquiry has been made. Did anyone count for either vote the selectmen or the advisory committee? They, they were counted. Okay, thank you. On this matter, 81 voted yes, 65 no. The motion is adopted. The amend The motion is adopted. And I declare it so voted. Mr. Right, Moderator? Uh, yes. Uh, Chair recognizes David Slot. I believe a quorum is 150 for this meeting? No, it's, 100, it's 150 to begin and it's 100 to um, continue uh, once the uh, quorum of the meeting begins. The Chair would just advise we only have several items of business left, okay. important items of business, and uh, it would be very difficult to uh, convene another meeting in the chair's opinion. The next item of business is article 32. Chair recognizes, <coughs> recognizes John Scholl from the planning board. Mr. Moderator, uh, I move that the town amend the zoning bylaws as most recently amended by amending section six Paragraph E2, variances, by prohibiting use variances by amending subparagraph 2 and all other subparagraphs to remain the same as printed in the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Motions been made and seconded. Uh, the chair recognizes John Scholl. Uh, this is created so that uh, we're in a, a better position to stick with what is outlined in the zoning bylaws to limit use variances. Chair recognizes Doc Yacobucci. <clears throat> I'm having trouble understanding the logic of the language. It says at the beginning of the sentence, the Zoning Board of Appeals may grant, uh, may grant a variance in the terms of the bylaw. And then it turns around and says, however, the Zoning Board of Appeals may not authorize I don't see how it can make any sense. You can't have it say, you can do it at the first part of the sentence, and then the second part of the sentence, no, you can't do it. Uh, Chair recognizes no John Short. Uh, Mr. Moderator, just to clarify, so, so this is specific to use variances? So there are variances that are permitted, but this is, uh, is specific to use variances? that are being eliminated. Chair recognizes Bob DiMarzo. Mr. Moderator, I, I think this bylaw makes a lot of sense. The town has grown to a point um, where anything that goes on can affect another area. Uh, and there's been a lot of discussion over the years whether the use variant should be taken out of zoning. And uh, if something is that important that it needs to go beyond the zoning bylaws, then we should have a town meeting like this where p the people can vote yes or no and not in the hands of a 
three-man board in this case. Thank you. Chair, should also mention that the chair has been advised that on April 8th, the planning board held a hearing in this matter and unanimously voted to support the bylaw amendment. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, this requires a two-thirds. All those in favor of the amendment by John, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Article 28. On page 20 of the warrant, and the chair recognizes Becky Coletta. I move that the town amend its zoning bylaws as most recently amended by amending section 5.5.B, nonconforming uses, by modifying the text to conform with general law chapter 40A, section 6, as printed in the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Motion is made and seconded. The chair recognizes Becky Coletta. Um, this is. Um, a bylaw that was recommended by town council to comply with a statutory requirement regarding the time period for construction. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, once again, this requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Article 21. Move that the town Chair, amend Chair recognizes um, and, uh, Tom Irving. Move that the town amend the zoning by a Tom, I think you got to bring it closer to. I think it's on. You just have to speak into it. Move that the town amend its zoning bylaws as most re recently amended by amending section 4.2.B.3, residential commercial district uses permitted by special permit by including assisted living facilities in those areas that may be allowed in the residential commercial district by special permit as printed in the uh, 2019 annual warrant. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? The chair recognizes Tom Irving. This amendment will include assisted living facilities among the uses allowed by special permit. The planning board voted unanimously on March 25th, 2019, to recommend this amendment. Any further discussion? And once again, the chair has uh, been informed that the uh, planning board held a hearing on this on March 25th and unanimously supported it. All those in favor of the motion by Tom, please raise your hand. It requires a two thirds. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two thirds necessary for passage. And the next item of business is Article 30. On page 21, Article 30, and the chair recognizes Becky Coletta. I move that the town amend its zoning bylaws as most recently amended by amending section 6.D.3, special permits, by specifying the departments and boards to receive a copy of the special permit application for review as printed in the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Motion's been seconded. Uh, chair has been informed that on March 25th, the planning board held a hearing as required by law and unanimously supported the bylaw. The chair recognizes Becky Coletta. Um, this was actually designed to sort of streamline the process for applicants and to reflect what is current practice of distributing um, applications to other departments and boards and trying to make a time period for other departments and boards to respond to those applications um, or be deemed to be in support of those applications. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion which requires a two-thirds vote, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it and I declare it so voted having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. 
Article 31. And on page 22, Article 31, the chair recognizes Tom Irving. Move that the town amend the zoning bylaws as a most originally amended by amending section 6.H.1, effects of unfavorable decisions by clarifying the uh, applicable authority for such unfavorable decisions as printed in the annual town meeting warrant. Motions and maiden seconded. The chair is informed that on March 25th, the planning board had a hearing and unanimously voted to support the article. The chair recognizes Tom Irving. Very simply, this just simplifies the uh, special permit, uh, which is either the Zoning Boarding Board of Appeals or the Planning Board. And we, uh, we voted, voted unanimously to adopt this, uh, recommend this amendment. Any further discussion? Seeing none, this requires a two thirds. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two thirds necessary for passage. As we wind down, Article 23 is the next item of business. On page 15 of the warrant, and the chair recognizes John Scholl. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town amend its zoning bylaws as most recently amended by amending section four, paragraph 4A, business district B, uses allowed by including uses allowed in residence district A, and by amending section four, paragraph 4B, business district B, uses permitted by special permit, by including uses allowed by special permit in residence district A, and by amending section four, paragraph 4D10, business district B, dimensional regulations by modifying the dimensional regulations as printed in the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Motions and made and seconded. The chair has been informed on March 25th, the planning board held a hearing and unanimously supported the proposal. The chair recognizes John Scholl. Uh, the purpose of this zoning bylaw change uh, and, and for those who are not familiar with this district, this is primarily around uh, Route 139. Uh, it's to basically uh, allow for lots that are more attractive to buyers and potential businesses. Uh, the lots are often smaller and uh, oftentimes people are coming in for variances and, uh, and, and adjustments to non-conforming lots. So this will just make it more attractive on the front end. Any further discussion on this matter, which requires a two thirds? All those in favor of the motion by John, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it and I declare it so voted having reached the necessary two thirds needed for passage. Article seven, which has been dealt with, right? Oh no, so, I'm sorry, it's not on the consent. Article seven. In the town, town recognizes Kelly Seifert. Yeah, Kelly Seifert, Beachwood Ave. Oh, yeah, just. Okay, um, move that the town appropriate and transfer from free cash the sum of one hundred thousand dollars to be added the other post-employment benefits liability fund established by the vote of article 11 of the april 24th 2012 annual town meeting and further that the sum of one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars be appropriated and transferred from free cash and that the sum of twenty five thousand dollars be appropriated and transferred from water surplus to be added to the amounts voted in article 16 of the November 4th, 2003 special town meeting to fund separation pay benefits and further that the sum of $25,000 be appropriated and transferred from free cash to be aided to the special injury leave fund established by the vote of article seven of the May 9th, 2017 town meeting 
and further that the sum of twenty five thousand dollars be appropriated and transferred from free cash to be added to the workers compensation insurance fund established by the vote of article four of the october twenty fourth two thousand seventeen town meeting and further that the sum of one hundred fifty one thousand seven hundred dollars be appropriated and transferred from the sale of real estate fund to be added to the capital stabilization fund established by the vote of article 22 of the may 8 2018 town meeting and further that the sum of 176 108 dollars 176108 dollars be appropriated and transferred from water surplus to be added to the water stabilization fund established by the vote of Article 6 um, of the October 23rd, 2018 town meeting, and that the sum of $25,000 be appropriated and transferred from free cash to be added to the stabilization fund. Second. Now you can breathe, thank you. Um, all those, uh, any discussion on this matter which has been made and seconded? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Kelly, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 26 is the next item of business, and Article 29, which was postponed earlier in the meeting. So we will take up Article 26 first, which is on page 17 of the warrant, and the chair recognizes Becky Coletta. I move that the town amend its zoning bylaws as most recently amended by amending section 5.1.K <coughs> signs appeals by amending the time period for an appeal to conform with section 6.C and further by amending section 5.7.F <coughs> site plan approval by procedure by specifying the appeals process and further by amending section 6.C appeals by clarifying the appeals process and further by amending the table of contents to reflect the change to the section 6C heading and by amending section 6G hearings and decisions by clarifying the authority to hear appeals as printed in the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Second. Motions and made and checked it. Second of the chair has been informed that on April 8th, the planning board held a hearing and unanimously supported the article the chair recognizes Becky Coletta. So this is a, a bylaw that when people wanted to challenge site plan decisions by the planning board, it became unclear how they could bring that to court or bring it somewhere for appeal, particularly if the ZBA had a different piece of the process. And um, in reviewing this with town council, we came to the conclusion that it made sense for us to specify a process for someone to be able to appeal to court so that they wouldn't have to stop along the way, or last time what happened was that someone actually appealed to the ZBA and to court because it was unclear based on our bylaws. Chair recognizes former selectman Bob DiMarzo. Mr. Moderator, I move to amend Article 26, subsection H1, Part 2, to read, any appeal of a site plan review decision may be made to the Zoning Board of Appeals within 20 days of the date of the decision is filed with the town clerk and amend C1 part three by deleting the last sentence which reads, the Zoning Board of Appeals shall have no jurisdiction to hear an appeal of any site plan review decision. There is second. second. Motion's been seconded, Thank you. make sure you submit it. Yeah, I got it right here. Okay. Uh, Chair recognizes Bob DeMarzo. Um, as a bit of history, many, many, many years ago, when I, I had a full head of hair and a, a thin waist, I was on the planning board. <laughs> and during that time, we wrote the original site plan appeal bylaw because we realized the town is going to be growing, growing and there was no oversight at all of how a business could build on our town, prop, on their property within town. They could just go ahead and build, pull a building permit. So it was a good decision to have site plan. I think it served very well. Then maybe about a handful of years or so, the planning board um, and that, that right to have site plan approval was put in the ZBA's hands. About a handful of years ago, the Z planning board said, well, 
we think we should have site plan review for a variety of reasons which I won't get into, but one of the reasons was they said if site plan review is in the ZBA's hands and somebody wants to appeal it, the only place they can go is to court. It says it makes sense for the planning board to have site plan review, so whether it be the proponent that wants to build on the property or the abutter that doesn't like the decision of the site plan appeal, the decision by the planning board, they can go to the ZBA for relief or decision. As town council said, it made sense for the have to go to court. To me, it doesn't. I think the citizens of this town have the right to say, we just want to go to our townspeople, our board, and not have to hire a lawyer, not have to pay two, three hundred dollars an hour to uh, appeal something, and let the ZBA decide. And if then somebody wants to appeal it, they can then go to court. So to me, it makes a lot of sense to leave the ZBA as the place where somebody can appeal a site plan. Uh, obviously, the planning board doesn't want our town to be able to go to our town people for an appeal. They want to go to court, and I disagree. Uh, Bob, we need that in writing. Thank you. Chair recognizes Maria Karras. Yes. So um, I second what the gentleman said. I am a resident who had to actually appeal to the ZBA and to the court. If you take, if you disagree and you try to protect your property because the planning board granted a permit that your council find to uh, have jurisdiction for the ZBA to look at, it basically tells you that you need to go straight to court. So unless you're willing to pay $34,000, if you're in that situation, or $40,000, it, like the gentleman uh, explained, it would be fair to the resident to have somewhere in town besides the same body that issued the permit to go to. Forcing residents to go straight to court is going to be not only costly for us, but it's also going to cost the town. The town spent a lot of money also in legal counsel. It's going to, whether you're a business, a resident, or you're the town, it's, it, to me, it's not fair to anybody. Chair recognizes Becky Coletta. A, a couple things there. I think one of the things that we also found was that town council represents the ZBA and the planning board. And so at that point, the town ends up having to hire a second set of council to represent the ZBA if somebody's already representing the planning board. So it does end up costing the town more to um, sort of split town council in that way. And the other thing is that there are some cases where um, the ZBA is actually also the person being um, who's appealing. And we're looking for it to be specified that the board could include the ZBA or the planning board. So, and I understand that it will cost. Chair the, recognizes Maria. Sorry, it it would cost the town, so it cost everybody. Um, but it will also cost individual people that make fifty thousand dollars a year, either to put up with something that probably was unfair. A lot of people trust the current planning board, but it does not mean that the same planning board is going to be there twenty years from now. So if you have somebody that is not as competent as you or as the chair, then we run the risk of having to force residents to always make, pull out of your pocket thousands of dollars because nobody else, you have any other resources. Chair recognizes uh, Joel Bard, town council. Mr. Moderator, Joel Bard, town council. Uh, we have no opinion on this one way or the other, but I will make one point that it's important to realize the way it is now the appeal would go to the zoning board and if somebody's unhappy with the outcome at the zoning board they can then go to court so it's not as if a court appeal is eliminated by leaving it the way it is and I must say it's a very murky area of case law as it is and the one potential benefit it doesn't automatically eliminate it but one of the potential benefits of this bylaw, is this bylaw amendment, is to streamline the path to court. So you don't have the intermediate step of having an appeal at the zoning board. Because once the zoning board makes a decision, it's not as if it ends there. 
someone could still appeal it to court and that happens. So there is murkiness either way, but the, the, there is potentially a virtue to what's been proposed here in that it makes it uh, more efficient for all of the parties. Chair recognizes Bob DeMarzo. I have to agree with Chairman Coletta and Town Council. If the planning board issues a decision and somebody wants to appeal it to the ZBA, there doesn't have to be a lawyer there at all. The ZBA will have a hearing, just as it always does, without an attorney there. The ZBA may deny or approve it. It's streamlined, it's done, unless the planning board still feels so strongly that maybe it is a serious case the town council has to get involved. But to say it streamlines it, I don't know, has anybody here been to court? How long does it take, how many years to get through court? It doesn't streamline it. It just goes cha-ching, 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 cha-ching at 300 bucks an hour. Thank you. Any further discussion? So we have one amendment that's on the table that's been offered by Bob DeMarzo, and we'll take that up first. That requires a simple majority, and the main motion will require a two-thirds. So once again, the motion by Mar Bob DeMarzo was moved to amend Article 26, subsection 1, part 2, to read, any appeal of a site plan review decision may be made to the Zoning Board of Appeals within 20 days of the date the decision is filed within the town, with the town clerk, and further amends, uh, art, amends article, I'm sorry, C1, section three, is that correct? By deleting the last sentence which reads, the Zoning Board of Appeals shall have no jurisdiction to hear an appeal of any site plan review decision. All those in favor of the amendment, that amendment, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it and I declare it so voted. To the main motion now, as amended by the Bob DeMarzo uh, amendment, this requires a two thirds. All those in favor of the amended motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it and I declare it so voted having reached the necessary two thirds necessary for passage. And so we'll go right to article 29. And the chair recognizes Becky Coletta. I move that the town amended zoning bylaws as most recently amended by amending section 5.7.f site plan approval procedure by updating the departments and boards to receive a copy of the site plan submission from the planning board and requiring filing and recording of the decision by amending subparagraphs 1, 8, and 9 with all other subparagraphs to remain the same as printed in the 2019 annual town meeting warrant. Motion has been made and seconded. Chair recognizes Becky Coletta. Again, this is trying to clarify that there is a process whereby the site plan goes on permanent record um, and that it sort of has a procedure to start the clock running for any appeals, which now will go to the ZBA, but we still need this to clarify the process so that there's just not a lot of head scratching. Any further discussion? This requires a two-thirds. Uh, all those in favor of the motion by Becky, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Article 27. <coughs> which is on page 19. Chair recognizes Tom Irving from the planning board. Move that the town amended zoning bylaws as mostly we are amended by amending section five, paragraph five, subparagraph A, non-conforming uses, by granting the building inspector authority to issue building permits for alterations to non-conforming single and two family structures in specified circumstances as printed in the 2019 town meeting warrant. Motion's been seconded. Chair recognizes Tom Irving. 
basically, this is just, again, uh, to simplify the process, uh, and just helps people to make it easier to be able to get building permits. And once again, the chair has been informed that on March 25th, the planning board held a hearing as required by law and unanimously voted to support the amendment. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, which requires a two-thirds vote, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds. Needed for passage. 20, uh, four, Article 4. Article 4, page 2, also refers to Appendix B, and the chair recognizes Steve Walsh. Move that the town appropriate the sum of $2,096,495 from water revenue to fund the FY20 Water Enterprise Fund as shown in Appendix B of 2019 Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Second. Any discussion on this matter? Chair recognizes Arthur Boyle from the Board I'll, of Selectmen. I hope you'll recognize me in about two minutes. Okay, I will. <laughs> Any discussion on this matter? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Steve Walsh, pre please raise their hand. All those opposed, the ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. We have one item of business left, but prior to that, Chair recognizes Arthur Boyle. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. As it's um, the last meeting that he's going to sit as our chairman, as a member of the Board of Selectmen, we have from the board members and uh, Sabrina and Ed, his colleagues, we have a uh, certificate of appreciation for uh, Matthew Furlong, who, it was pointed out to me earlier tonight, was not born when I was first elected to office in town. <laughs> You were an outstanding member, and we appreciate all you did for the town. Thank you. Uh, last time, oh, Chair recognizes Matt Furlong. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and thank you, Arthur, and through you to the people of town. It's been a really, it's been a really great three years. I've learned so much, and I really appreciate you having me as selectman. One last item of business, the chair just wants to take a moment. Um, you know, we did this uh, in, it seems like it should be 11 o'clock, but it's only quarter or 10, so a little over two and a half hours. And, um, but there's been months and months and months of preparation that goes into this meeting, starting last year with the hardworking members of the advisory committee, a couple of which uh, are not here tonight, whom aren't here tonight, but we appreciate their, their hard work. Obviously, the planning board's been hard at work for months, and the chair particularly wants to thank the town clerk and her assistant and the assistant to the town manager, uh, Sabrina Chilcott, who has made the chair's life a lot easier uh, over the past couple of years, but particularly for this meeting. So I thank you for that. Uh, last item, of and thank you for hanging in there and attending. Uh, it's been a great meeting. Uh, last item of business is Article 15. The chair recognizes Steve Curley. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, and or eminent domain the fee to and or permanent and or temporary easements for public way purposes, including without limitation for the construction, alteration, installation, maintenance, improvement, repair, replacement and or relocation of rights of way, sidewalks, drainage, utilities, driveways, guardrails, slopes, grading, rounding, construction, landscaping, or other appurtenances and or facilities to enable the town to undertake the Center Street project and for any and all purposes incidental or related thereto in, on, and under certain parcels of land located on or near Center Street and approximately shown on plans entitled Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division Plan and Profile of Center Street in the town of Pembroke, Plymouth County prepared by Design Consultants, Inc., on file with the town clerk, as said plans may be amended and or incorporated into an easement plan and land within 200 feet of said parcels and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to submit a petition to the General Court for a special act authorizing the conveyance to the town of land and or interest therein 
for the foregoing purposes in parcels of land shown on the plans and owned by the United States of America, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and or other public instrumentalities or agencies. Transfer the care, custody, and control of a portion or portions of the town-owned property or properties shown on the aforesaid plans from the board or officer having custody of the same for the purposes for which such properties are currently held to the Board of Selectmen for Public Way and Utility Purposes, and further to dedicate said por portions of the town-owned properties to the foregoing purposes, and, if applicable, authorize the Board of Selectmen to submit petitions to the General Court to allow the foregoing under Article 97 of the Massachusetts Constitution or otherwise, C, authorize the Board of Selectmen to dispose of any excess land located outside the altered layout of Center Street on such terms and conditions and for such consideration as the Selectmen deem appropriate. And further, D, authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into all agreements and take any action and all actions as may be necessary or appropriate to effectuate the foregoing purposes. Motions made and seconded. Chair recognizes Steve Corelli. Oh. This is the um, preliminary uh, in, uh, motion. We did this with the Route 14 uh, project as well. It, it allows the uh, state project to go forward uh, and it's going to be widening, widening uh, Route 36 in places and adding sidewalks uh, on, from, uh, on the second side up to uh, Mountain Ave from the center. Chair recognizes. Next Alicia speaker. Cisliano Perry of Carroll Ave. Um, on that Route 14 plan, there was no um, provisions made for mailbox location, and I don't see on the plan that's stated here the Massachusetts um, Department of Transportation Highway Division plan and profile for um, Center Street in the town of Pembroke, Plymouth County. It shows no location of mailboxes. Is there any provisions that aren't listed there that have been made for that? The chair can't compel anyone to ask a question, but I'm just inquiring whether the town administer, uh, town manager to, could address that issue. It's a good question. Yeah, okay. DPW Director Gene Fulmine is here, and the um, chair recognizes Gene. Gene, I don't think it's on. Now, the town has no jurisdiction uh, on placement of mailboxes. We tried on the Route 14 corridor project, but it's all through the postal and Washington. Well, could a motion or an amendment be made to accommodate where the location of them is? Because on 14, I feel that it makes it ADA uncompliant where the location of the mailboxes are. And per the plan, it states that we're making um, it more ADA compliant and accessible, as well as adding a bike path for um, people to ride their bikes down the street. But having the mailboxes there, I personally watched a kid go over his handlebars when his bike handlebar hit the mailbox. So I don't want to see that happen to more people on such a busy road either. Chair recognizes Bob DiMarzo. If, if the process is the same as the Route 14 uh, uh, Barker Street, uh, project. There will be a public comment uh, period. I know I had some comments on the Route 14 uh, corridor project and the public will have a right to make comments and make suggestions. So I don't know if this is the proper place to make that change or when the state is actually drawing up more detailed plans and, and they have those hearings. Chair recognizes Alicia. Alicia Cisliano Perry. Perry. Um, couldn't I file a motion for an amendment saying that um, any mailboxes cannot be overhanging or installed directly on any sidewalk surface? So if they wanted to stick them closer to the road, they would have to have a strip of grass there rather than having them directly into the concrete or have them beyond the concrete. Yeah, and the chair would defer, I guess, to town council. It, it, would be open, the chair would be open to any amendment. I just don't know whether it's proper in this 
in the context of this article well, that you're the, recognizing. The plan does show that it has an elevation, it has a cross section showing where the sidewalk will be in the concrete curb and everything except for location of mailboxes, which is something that we do have in Pembroke. Chair recognizes Town Council Joel Bard. Mr. Moderator, thank you, Joel Bard. I was going to rise on that point. If you look at this article, it's not specifically about the project and its plans. It refers to the plan so that you can identify the real estate. This article authorizes the uh, transfer acquisition of real estate. So it's not approving the project per se. It's not approving the project plans. It refers to the plans for purposes of identifying the real estate at issue. But I think the point of the previous speaker at the microphone mm -hmm. is well taken that the time to raise those points will be when the project itself is being discussed. This is just authorizing right. the transfer of real estate. May I say something? Well, okay, well, do I, go ahead. Chair recognizes Alicia Well, would Curry. you want to go ahead and deem them able to acquire this property if they're not going, if they're going to make it not safe for people to ride their bikes on or down the street? nor ADA compliant, I wouldn't want to deem them able to go ahead to move forward with that project without those provisions being in place. When the proposal is not making those, you know, if you're gonna have a proposal in there, it should be more complete then. Chair recognizes Dan Fabuco from the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Mr. Moderator, so these are two separate and apart points. She, she's discussing uh, the, the, the plans them, themselves, but this article is only uh, acquiring easements uh, places where the road needs to widen, uh, other places where they need to put a pile of dirt for a week or two, where they need to pack, park their, their backhoe. These are the easements that we're talking about. Um, the, the time for, as a couple of speakers have said, the time for this kind of discussion is in the comment period. But I will say one other thing, comment period or not, the town of Pembroke cannot compel the federal government to do something. The federal government, is. Uh, rules over the town, so we, we, we know that. And the, uh, uh, the mail department is going to tell us where they want the mailboxes. And there are times when governmental agencies don't do things that seem right, and if you drive down 14, as you said, it seems that way. But the Postal Service is the only one that's going to dictate where the mailboxes are, not the town of Pembroke. But we can suggest that in public comment period. Chair recognizes, now previously haven't spoken. Caitlin Bergen. I'm sorry, first name. Sorry, Caitlin Bergen, Mattakesett Street. Um, I just wanted to address where they're talking about the easements. I lived on that Route 14 project, and I will say it was, while it was pretty good, it was pretty much a nightmare. Um, while I did not receive payment for the easement because they sold it to uh, a year before I actually brought the home, I lived there during the entire you know, start to finish where they widen the road. Um, there's still been, there's at least three issues with my property um, from giving them the easements that, you know, whether it was the state that was supposed to do it. If you talk to the state, they blame the town. If you talk to the town, they blame the state. I was promised a second driveway. They shortened the wall in front of my house. They moved a telephone pole, but then they put a, um, a sidewalk where my driveway was supposed to be. Um, it's just a lot of it. They don't tell you. Um, I can agree with her on the mailboxes. That machine, it goes right up to the mailbox, but then it leaves a hump. So, you know, anyone who's handicapped cannot get over the hump of snow. They do it at every single mailbox. To check your mail, you have to make sure there's no cars coming because you literally have to stand in the road to check your mail. Um, I know they took down my trees, which again, I didn't give them permission. They got permission from the woman who owned the house before me. Um, in doing that, they ended up pulling out two of my, I had a property where I had rhododendrons that have been there, you know, 30 years, and with every tree, they took out my 30-year rhododendrons. The town promised me they were going to replant rhododendrons. So as much as I want to support, you know, doing more construction to make it look nice, they need to finish the projects they've already started. Um, I, I know I'm not the only one on the street who's had problems. They, some people, their driveways got thinner. Some people, their driveways got wider. But I know with the whole broken promises, like at this point, it's been completely swept under the rug. So to see it happen to a whole other end of town, I think voices need to be heard. 
Chair recognizes Dan Trevugo, Board of Selectmen. Mr. Chairman, the Route 14 project, the Route 53 project, this Route 36 project are not town projects. The town of Pembroke has absolutely no involvement with easements. The, the Mass DOT, Mass Department of Transportation, has a whole department for easements. No one in all of the state ever gets an easement without a negotiation with that department. A written contract, a written document comes out of that. So there is no, I didn't know that this was going to happen. They were gonna give me a second driveway, but this didn't happen. It's a written document. So maybe the previous owner had the, who actually signed the document, got the information, but it's, this, it's, it's not the town of Pembroke, it's the state of Massachusetts. And they need the town to make the first step to look for the easements, then the state will come in and actually negotiate easements. I was assured. Yeah, I, I'm just going to, not previously, I haven't okay. spoken. I'll get back to you. Chair recognizes former select woman Michelle Burt. Move the question. Well, the motion's been made and it's proper. Um, so, all those in favor of moving the question, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it. So, we'll go to the main motion, which was made by who? <laughs> I forget. Steve Curley. <laughs> Uh, uh, it re does require a two-thirds uh, vote because it's a requirement of an easement. Um, all those in favor of the motion by Steve Curley, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. The chair thanks you for your attendance. Arthur Boyle moves that the meeting be adjourned to no time or place certain. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much. Five last week, pushing the total to 839 in 23 states, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said Monday. This year's total marks the, first, the most U.S. cases since 1994. Measles was declared eliminated in the United States in 2000. The 75 cases are a higher bump than in the previous two weeks, when about 60 additional cases were reported each week. The spike is concerning, especially because of the downward trend in recent weeks demonstrated that it was possible to keep the infection rates from going up, says Ogbonaya Omenka, an associate professor and public health specialist at Butler University. 
Most of the new cases were in New York City and its suburbs, where hundreds of cases have been reported this year. The area is home to Orthodox Jewish communities where many parents refuse to allow vaccinations for their children. Authorities mandated vaccinations in some zip codes. Outbreaks are linked to travelers who brought measles back from the countries from countries such as Israel, Ukraine, and the Philippines, where large measles outbreaks are occurring, the CDC said. The travelers spread the disease to unvaccinated people in the United States. The CDC urges vaccination, a position rejected by opponents. Last week, Texas State Rep. Jonathan Strickland called vaccines sorcery in a social media post criticizing a vaccine expert. Vaccines are dangerous, Strickland said, comparing government involvement to, in vaccinations to communism. In Washington State, Governor Jay Inslee signed a bill Friday ending personal or philosophical measles vaccine exemptions for most parents whose kids will attend daycare centers or schools. Dozens of parents protested outside the signing. Primary symptoms of the disease include fever, runny nose, cough, and a rash that can spread across the entire body. In a small number of cases, people can develop pneumonia, swelling of the brain, and other serious symptoms. Measles can cause men to become sterile and pregnant women to deliver prematurely. Our other cover story is by Richard Wolf, Abortion Laws on Collision Course. And this is out of Washington, D.C. Red state governors and legislatures are rushing to enact tough laws against abortion in hopes that a more conservative Supreme Court is ready to rule favorably. There's one problem. The laws conflict with the Supreme Court precedents, and the justices aren't likely to reverse themselves anytime soon. The flurry flurry of anti-abortion action comes mostly in the form of fetal heartbreak laws in states with Republican governors and legislators.